Heroes of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Now that warmer weather prevails throughout the country, more and more families will be getting out of doors, into the yard, on trips to the beach, and drives to the country. Yet, via the medium of radio, you will be able to keep informed on world events as they happen at a rapid-fire pace. You will be able to listen and be entertained by music, drama, mystery, and comedy. For wherever you go, there's radio. And the NBC Radio Network is on the job to keep you informed and entertained. Yes, whenever you tune to this NBC station, you can be sure that you'll hear the finest in radio listening. More than one-third of the radio sets in the nation are in automobiles or are of the portable type. So if you go to the beach for an afternoon of fun in the sun, if you drive into the country to view the lush new growth, or if your outdoor activity is limited to putting Vigoro on your lawn to bring it back to rich green life, take along your radio. You'll be royally entertained when you tune to the NBC radio network. And now, let's get back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers... The case called Address Unknown. It is just before noon on a hot day in August 1940. In the Big Bend country of Texas, 40 miles northeast of the Mexican border, a poorly dressed woman trudges along a dirt road. With one hand, she leads a four-year-old boy. In the other, she carries a cheap cardboard suitcase. How far we got to walk, Mama? Oh, quite a piece yet before we get to the bus stop. Now, you come on, Tommy. Give me a hand. I'm hungry. Yeah, I expect you out there. I reckon I could use a bite of food myself. What we got to eat, Mama? We'll go over across the road to sit under that tree. Give us a little bit of shade, anyhow. And we'll use that old flat rock for a table. What we got to eat? Oh, something good. What? Sandwiches. We got the nice side meat. I want peanut butter. Tomorrow, Tommy, when we get to Aunt Josie's. Peanut butter would make you too thirsty to in all this hot sun. I want a drink, Mama. Well, I ain't got none, Tommy. Left the house so fast this morning, I clean forgot about bringing a jar of water. But I'm thirsty. Tommy, we're just going to have to... Wait a minute, that ranch house over there, they ought to have some water. I'm thirsty. Tommy, honey, see that house down the road? Uh-huh. Well, you just walk down there and ask them if they got a tin can they can give you some water in. It's so far. Well, I'll be watching you. Now, go along now. All right, Mama. Mind you, don't stop to play now. Just get the water and bring it right back. All right, Mama. Can I have some water? Can I have some water? <laughs> well, now, look what we got here. <laughs> hey, what's a little fella like you doing all the way out here by yourself? My mama wants a can of water. Why, sure, Sonny. Where is she at? Over there. We're back on the road? Uh-huh. We're going to Aunt Josie's. Is that so? Now, what's your name, Sonny? Tommy. Well, Tommy, you come right on out back. we can see what we can do about getting you some water. We got chickens and a horse. Yeah, now, what kind of horse is he? His name's Robin. Robin and Tommy, huh? Yeah, bet you make quite a pair. Now, here's a cup full of water for you. There. Now, I reckon we can put the water for your ma in this pail here. You and your ma live around here, Tommy, do you? Now, we live home. Huh? Uh-huh. There you are now. There. You want some more water? Uh-uh. Yeah, maybe I'd better ride you back to your ma in my car. It's too hard for a little fella like you to be walking. Come on now, Tommy. Mom and me rode in the car this morning. Is that so? Hey, did you come for her? I don't know. Hey, hey, in you go, Tommy. Now slide all the way across. Now we'll just put this pail in the middle here. 
this your car? Yep. Had it a long time, too. Now, where'd you leave your mama? Over there. We got side meat sandwiches. Yeah, I bet they're good, too. <laughs> your face looks funny. Huh? Oh, <laughs> you mean my whiskers, huh? Well, that's what happens when you don't shave for a couple of days. I don't got no whispers. Well, you'll get whispers soon enough, Tommy. And when you do, you'll wish you didn't have them. <laughs> yeah, is this where you left your mom? Uh-huh. No, I... Come on, Tommy, come on. There, there we are. My mom ain't here. Where's my mama? Oh, she's around there somewhere. Suitcase and lunch are sitting there. Where's my mama? Now, 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 Tommy. She'll probably be right back in a minute. I'll give her a call. Let her know that we're here. Lady! Oh, lady! I want my mama! Lady! Where are you, lady? Mama! Mama! Lady! Lady, I got your little boy here. Mama! I want my mama! She'll be right back now. I want my mama! After the rancher had waited half an hour for the boy's mother to appear, he took Tommy back to his house. Then he phoned Texas Ranger Company headquarters, located some 30 miles to the north. Rangers Jace Pearson and Clay Morgan arrived an hour later. They went with the rancher and the boy to the spot where the missing woman had last been seen. There, Ranger. Suitcase and lunch spread out on that there rock. I just can't figure it. I want my mama. No, Tommy, don't cry. Everything's going to be all right. I want my mama. What's your other name, Tommy? Tell me what. Tommy, who else? I want my Oh, mama. now, Tommy, whoa. Let's not run away. I want to go to my mama. Come here, son. We're going to find your mama. Clay, take a look around. See if you can find anything. Sure, Jace. What's that? What? Oh, that's my badge. What's it for? Well, uh, to where? Tommy, where's your daddy? Did he come with you? My daddy's in heaven. I see. Where do you live, Tommy? Home. I don't know if it'll help any ranger, but he said they lived in the place where there were chickens and they have a horse named Robin. Uh-huh. Well, did you walk over here from your house, Tommy? Yeah. We got thirsty. He said they rode in a car this morning. I might have got a lift partway. Where were you going, Tommy? To Aunt Sylvie's. Jace! Now, what is it, Clay? Come on over here a second. Can I go with you? Oh, you stay here, Tommy. I'll be right back. Yeah, Tommy, uh, you stay here with me. And if you're real good, I'll let you ride one of my horses. What'd you find? Some tracks here lead into the brush. Yeah, let's see where they go. You figure the woman could have run off and left the kid? Maybe. Doesn't seem likely she'd take off into the brush like this. Yeah, you're probably right. She left her suitcase, too, if she... Hey, Jace. Look at that. Yeah, another set of tracks. Coming in at an angle. Much heavier than the ones we've been following. Could have been a man. Looks like he was moving pretty fast, too. Come on. Tracks are starting to overlap. Maybe the second set was made by somebody coming along after the woman already passed. No path going through here. Out if anybody'd come this way unless he had some special reason. Yeah, I wonder why... Clay. Huh? Over there to the left. All that torn brush piled up. Looks like it's covering something. Let's go have a look. And pull the brush aside. Yeah. Here she is, Jess. Dead? Yeah, strangled. Beaten up first. Pretty powerful man from the look of those marks on her face and throat. There's a little purse in the pocket of her dress. Anything in it? Twelve dollars and a comb. Reckon we can rule out robbery. Uh-huh. That poor little boy. It's times like this when I wish I'd never seen a badge. How are we going to tell him about this? Well, we can't for a while. The thing we have to do is keep his mind off his mother until we find out more about him. I guess you're right. The way it looks, Jace, the killer didn't go any further into the brush. No, he probably headed back for the road. Let's see if we can pick up his trail. We found the trail. The tracks came out on the road 50 feet from where the dead woman's suitcase had been left. We checked the suitcase without finding any identification. Then we called for the Justice of the Peace, and I waited while Clay took Tommy Wilkes back to our headquarters. After the J.P. arrived, we took the woman's body into town. It was 4.30 when I walked into the office where Clay was talking to Tommy. 
<laughs> All right, Tommy, you just play with these while I go over and talk to Ranger Pearson for a minute. All right. How are you doing? I've been trying to keep him occupied. Maybe those handcuffs will keep him busy for a while. Mm, it's a wonder you didn't give me your pistol. Maybe you think he didn't ask for one. <laughs> He's a swell kid, Jace, but I'm worn out. He's got more energy than a two-year-old bobcat. Did you have him photographed? Yeah, we had to practically chain him down to keep him still. Mm, so you got him some ice cream? Yeah, he was hungry. He's already eaten over half of it. How come you got so much? Well, I tried to get a pint. All they had left was corks. Find out any more about his family? No. Maybe you better have tried it. Mm-hmm. Well, how's everything, Tommy? Fine. You just sit and talk a while, huh? Can I have some ice cream? No, I think you had enough, Tommy. I now... want some ice cream. Well, all right. Clay, put a little more ice cream in that dish. Sure. Tommy, you said you were going to your Aunt Josie's. Uh-huh. Here you are, Tommy. Will you fix it for me? Hmm. What's he mean? He likes it stirred up. Won't eat it unless it's like soup. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see. You like ice cream? Yeah, sometimes. Here you are, Tommy. Is that better? Uh-huh. Tommy, did you ever go to your Aunt Josie's before? Uh-uh. How long were you and your mama walking on the road? I don't know. Did you eat breakfast at home this morning? Uh-huh. That could narrow down our area some, Jason. Yeah. Tommy, when did you... Oh, wait a second, you're spilling ice cream all down your sleeve. Here, I'll wipe hey. it. What's the matter? You're hurt. Where? Here. Just let me pull that sleeve back and take a look. Hey, that's an ugly-looking black and blue mark. How'd you get this mark on your arm, Tommy? George did it. Who's George? Is he your brother? No, he's George. Where does he live? At our house. Why'd you do it, Tommy? He, he said I was bad. <gasps> I wasn't there. Is George a little boy or a man? Uh, a man. You tired, Tommy? I want my mama to put me to bed. Uh, we'll put you to bed, Tommy. In a nice big bed. I want my mama. Take him out and put him in that cot in the next room, will you, Clay? Sure. Come on, Tommy. Let's go. Are you going to take me to bed, though? Sure. I want my mama to put me to bed. <sighs> While Clay was putting Tommy to bed, I checked by phone with the two post offices within a 30-mile radius of the spot where Tommy's mother had been killed. Nobody by the name of Wilkes was listed in the entire area. We sent Tommy's picture to all newspapers in the vicinity. The next morning, Clay and I took Tommy in the car and started combing the countryside in the hope that he would recognize some landmark. By noon, we'd accomplished nothing. You getting a little hungry, Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if we can't find some kind of store soon. We'll all have lunch, huh? Can I have peanut butter? Yeah, if you want. Mama gives me peanut butter at home. I don't like side meat sandwiches. Mm-hmm. You like side meat? Oh, there's Pedro. Who? Pedro, he comes to see George. You mean that man on the burrow we just passed? Yeah. I'll back up. You sure you know him? He's Pedro. Hey, senor. Hold up a minute. You call me, senor? Yeah, you mind coming back here? Arre, conchita, arre. Come out here, Tommy. That's a boy. Sounds funny. Buenos dias, senores. What is it you want? Your name, Pedro? Si, Pedro Sanchez. You ever see this little boy before? No, I never see him before. Pedro? Just a minute, Tommy. He says he knows you. Told us your name was Pedro. <laughs> Senor, many people have that name. I know you, Pedro. <laughs> no, little boy, you make a mistake. Maybe the mustache will make him think he know me. You sure you don't know the boy? Maybe he see me somewhere, senor, but I don't remember him. Tommy here says you've been to his house, says you visited somebody there by the name of George. George? <laughs> no, senor, this little boy, he make a mistake. You know how it is with the small ones. Sometimes they have a large imagination. You live near here, Pedro? Si. Maybe seven, eight miles by the river. On the border? Si. All right. I'm sorry we troubled you. Oh, any time, senores. Any time at all. Oh, by the way, is that general store down the road still open? Maria store? Oh, see, si, it's open. Thanks. De nada. Adios, senores. Arre, Conchita, arre. Bye, Pedro. Tommy, you sure that's the man who comes to see George? He comes to our house and sits at the table and talks to George. I don't know. What do you make of it, Jess? Could be a mistake or Tommy's imagination. Then again, it's just possible our friend Pedro is lying. In 
just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Have you ever left home, locked the door behind you, and had the uneasy feeling that you left a burning cigarette behind? Next time, you'd better go back and check, because every 20 seconds throughout the year, a fire breaks out in the United States through carelessness. These fires kill 11,000 persons each year, disfigure for life or severely burn thousands more, and destroy $7 million worth of property. Protect your home from fire by following these simple safety precautions. Don't smoke in bed or throw away lighted cigarettes. Clean out closets, attics, basements, and any place where old newspapers, magazines, and inflammable materials are liable to accumulate. Repair defective electric equipment and replace worn or frayed wiring. Use cleaning fluids that won't burn and be careful with matches. Keep them out of the reach of children. Fires in the home, your home, can and must be prevented. Remember, don't gamble with fire. The odds are against you. And now back to the tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Address Unknown. After we left Pedro, we drove down to Maria's general store. We took Tommy inside with us. In one corner, two men sat playing checkers and arguing in low voices. A large woman sat behind the counter, swatting as many flies as she could reach from where she was sitting. Buenos dias, señores. Oh, you ever see such a hot day? Buenos dias, senor. The heat comes, so the flies. <coughs> to kill one fly, you get ten in his place. We'd like to get some lunch. Si, sí, senores. I have some cheese in the icebox. If you got the time, I can make uh, chili, tacos. How about peanut butter? Si, sí, si, sí, I get it. Oh. One bottle of peanut butter. Anything else, senor? Yeah, a loaf of bread and a bottle of milk. I see. Oh, it's hot, senores. Here's the bread and peanut butter. I'll get the milk in a minute. Her name is Maria. What'd you say, Tommy? Her name's Maria. <laughs> you remember my name, eh, muchacho? You know this boy, senora? Oh, see, he comes here sometimes with his mother. Tommy, suppose you go with that candy case and pick out something you want. We'll be right over. Hi. You know where this Mrs. Wilkes lives? Wilkes? Pero, senor, the senora who bring a little boy here, she's not named Wilkes. Her name Collins. Collins? You sure that's her name? Well, that's what she call herself, senor. So that's what I call her. You know where her place is? Oh, see, you go down the road two miles, and then you turn left. After maybe half a mile, you come to her house. Is she and the little boy the only ones who live there? Pero, no, senor. She got a husband. Husband? His name George, by any chance? Yeah, si, George Collins. He's the one. He come here sometimes to drink beer. Mm, sounds like Tommy's mother must have remarried. Uh-huh. And look at that bruise on Tommy's arm. I'd say George Collins isn't a very affectionate stepfather. Senora, you know a man named Pedro Sanchez? Oh, uh, si. He was here today, just a little while ago. Have you ever seen him with George Collins? Well, sometimes they are together here drinking beer. Thanks. Let's get Tommy, Clay. We're going to pay George Collins a visit. We went to the Collins' house. It was empty. We guessed that nobody had been there that day. We we're pretty sure now that George Collins was involved in his wife's murder. But before we could look for him, we had to get Tommy taken care of for the night. On the way back to town, we radioed Austin for a make on Collins. After we made arrangements for Tommy, we went to headquarters and found a mugshot of Collins that had come in on the wire photo together with his record. He'd served a two-year sentence for car theft. Our problem was to find him. We had an idea that Pedro Sanchez, the man we'd met that morning, knew more than he'd told us. After getting directions to his place from the general store, we took horses and started out. It was nearly 11 that night when we rode along the bank of the river and started up a rocky slope. That should be a Chase, up there near the top. It must still be awake. Leonard's burning in his window. Why do you figure he lied to us this morning? Only thing I can think of. He knows where Collins is and doesn't want us to know. Yeah. Nice view of the river from here. Yeah, a little cooler, too. Whoa, whoa, Charky. Whoa, Dad. Whoa, boy. Chase, you reckon Collins is hiding out up here with Sanchez? Maybe. It's not going to take us long to find out. Vengo! Vengo! Don't make so much noise. 
You want to have the whole... Oh. Can we come in, Pedro? Uh, si, si. Uh, come in, senores. Can we wake you up? Uh, si. Someone's sleeping. Are your lantern lit? Uh, uh, I, I must have forgot to pull it out. Maybe if I move it from the window and put it on the table, we can see better. Are you expecting somebody? Me? Oh, no, senor. What give gave you that idea? I kind of thought that lantern in the window might be some sort of signal. Signal? No, senor, you make a mistake. Come over here by the light, Pedro. Look, you recognize the man in this picture? No, senor. You should. We understand he's a good friend of yours. His name is George Collins. George Collins? I don't know such a man I've never seen before in my life. Why you look so at me, senor? I tell the truth. You always tell the truth, Pedro? See, always. This morning you said you didn't know the little boy we had with us. He's George Collins' stepson. That's the truth, senor. He make a mistake. I don't know him, and I never see this George Collins. Maria up at the general store says you have. Do you believe this fat woman? She, she lies. If anybody's lying, it's you, Pedro. Senor, I you never... You sure that lantern in the window wasn't a signal for Collins? No, no, no senor. Then put it back in the window, Pedro. Pero... All right, senor... Better go out and move the horses, Clay. Collins is going to show up. We don't want him to know he's got a reception committee. I'm sleepy, senor. It's how much longer I got to sit and wait. Joe Collins gets here. Senor, I tell you, this Collins is not coming. You're wasting your time. Maybe so, but... Hold it, Clay. Somebody's coming. Yeah. When he comes, I'll get the door. Don't you make a sound, Pedro, you hear? Cecil, I hear. I kill you! Watch him, Yates! Put down that chair, Pedro! Run for me! This will hold you. Come on, Clay. There he goes, down the slope. Hold it, Collins! He's heading for the river. I'll get him up. Watch it! Last one got him, Jace. Careful. Maybe trying some kind of trick. Yeah. He got his shoulder still breathing, though. Must have just knocked him out. Turn him over. Yeah. Jase. Yeah. It's not Collins. Well, then who is Wait it? a minute. He must have been carrying this package. Heroin. Pretty good-sized batch of it. So that's Pedro's racket. Narcotics. Where's Collins fit into this deal? Why'd Pedro lie about him? I don't know. But I think Pedro's going to give us the answer. We took Pedro and the man we'd shot back to town. After we put the wounded man in the hospital, we drove Pedro to headquarters and began asking him questions. His calmness had us puzzled. I want to know why you lied to us about Collins, Pedro. I have nothing to say. Is Collins mixed up in this narcotics racket with you? Why you ask me questions, senor? Send me to jail. I stayed there five years. How do you know it's only five years? I got a friend. First time he get caught, he go to jail. Five years. Where's Collins, Pedro? I don't know. Now, look. Wait a minute, Clay. I've got an idea why Pedro isn't talking. Maybe he thinks as soon as he gets out of jail, he'll be able to go right back into the narcotics business. And he figures Collins will be waiting for him. Is that right, Pedro? I've got nothing to say. If that's what you think, you're wrong. Because when we catch Collins, he's going to be held for murder. Murder? What do you mean? I'm pretty sure Collins killed his wife. Sooner or later, we'll find him, Pedro. And when we do, you'll go on trial with him. Me? I got nothing to do with the killing. You got plenty to do with it. If you know where Collins is and won't tell us. Oh, senor, you got to believe me. I didn't know he's mixed up in this. You want to tell us what you do know he's mixed up in? See, Senor Collins, he's the man I've been working for. When the stuff come from Mexico, always before I take it to his house. Where were you supposed to take it this time? Two days ago, Senor Collins come and he said he must go away. He said I have to bring the stuff to him in San Antonio, to a hotel there. Which one? The Park Hotel. Senor, I had nothing to do with this killing. You, you gotta believe me. Come on, Clay. Let's lock our friend up and get moving. It's a long drive to San Antonio. We reached San Antonio at 10 that morning. The Park Hotel was a rundown establishment that advertised rooms from a dollar up. The desk clerk told us Collins had left word that if anyone came for him, he could be found in a barber shop down the street. We left the hotel and started looking for it. That must be it down there, Jase. It's the only barber shop in this block. Yeah. How do you want to work it? We go in and get him? Probably better wait till play. A man coming out of the barbershop. That's Collins, all right. Jace, he sees us. He's running. Come on. 
He's ducking into that restaurant. Get around at the rear entrance, Clay. I'll go in the front. All right. Be careful, Jase. Yeah. Careful. Don't come no closer, Ranger. Drop that gun, Collins. He's going to make me. A lot of people in here, Ranger. You wouldn't want me to get hurt, would you? Now, look, Collins. Don't come no closer. If you're doing, I'll start shooting, and I don't care who I hit. You've got a narcotics and a murder rap already. You want to make it worse? How can I make it worse? I got nothing to lose. Now I'm going through this kitchen door. Don't try to come after me unless you want someone out there to get hurt. Grab him, Clay! Grab him, Collins! Grab him! I got him, Jake! Hold still, Collins! You lousy... Shut up. Come on, Collins. You were going on out the back. Let's keep right on going. It's all her fault. She shouldn't have poked her nose in my business. Pick up your feet. Come on. That's right. That little brat son of hers was going to learn something bad from me. Said she was going to the cops. That's why you killed her, Collins? I had to call her force. She ran away. I had to beat some sense in her head. Crazy woman. Come on. Keep moving. Quit pushing. The biggest mistake I ever made was marrying her. I never should have married her. That's one thing we agree on, Collins. If you hadn't... A little kid would still have his mother. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Today, two new shows join the NBC Entertainment lineup. Next on this station, you'll hear The Chase... And then stay tuned for your old favorite, The First Nighter, with Barbara Luddy and Olin Soule, the original stars of the series. Later today, it's Theater Guild on the air. Listen to this preview of today's show. We haven't far to go. If we can just reach the longboat, we'll have a chance. Wait. There's someone in the shadows. Good morning, Mr. Van Biden, and my dear young lady. I'm sorry to be such a spoil sport, but... You see, it's quite impossible to escape from my ship. And if you move one step closer to the longboat, I shall be forced to shoot you both. This is Margaret Phillips. You have just heard a scene from The Sea Wolf, a dramatic production in which I have the pleasure to co-star with Boris Karloff and Burgess Meredith. This evening on Theatre Guild on the Air on NBC. Hear The Sea Wolf today on Theatre Guild on the Air. And now, back to the conclusion of today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Tommy Wilkes was taken to the home of his aunt, who identified him through a newspaper picture. George Collins revealed the two other men who completed the narcotics ring. They were picked up by Texas Rangers, and all four men involved were given prescribed jail terms. George Collins was found guilty of murder with malice and was sentenced to life imprisonment at Huntsville. Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. The cast included Tony Barrett, Lillian Bias, Dick Beals, Leo Curley, Herb Ellis, and Don Diamond. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, it's The Chase on NBC.